Hey, what's up everyone? Shane here with ROA Offroad. We are located out in Utah. We also have a location just outside of Greenville in South Carolina. We do pretty much everything off-road. That's not what we've always been doing. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the RV industry and what to expect when you go out and buy a camper if you're a first-time RV owner. So if you're a first-time RV owner, I think you're gonna learn a lot from this video. If you're very seasoned and experienced, welcome. Maybe I have some advice that you can take away, but everybody that's owned RVs, I think they already understand this. So just a little bit of background information about me and where I'm coming from when I talk about this stuff. I don't know everything about the RV industry. I do feel like I know a good amount. I've been in the industry selling for almost 14 years. I mostly do sales and marketing. And I have personally, I was trying to calculate it recently, and I think I've personally sold almost a thousand campers and RVs. And this is everything from travel trailers, truck campers, fifth wheels, motorhomes. I've put a couple hundred thousand miles towing, driving. I used to pick up units from across the country and drive them out and sell them, right? Pick them up for cheaper in Florida, bring them out to Utah and sell them for more. So a pretty good amount of experience, hundreds of thousands of miles towing, driving every type of RV. And I've lived in RVs for multiple years. Growing up, my parents have owned every type of camper. We have some photos of me like sleeping in in a little dresser drawer when I was like one years old in a truck camper. My parents have owned lots of fifth wheels. They probably have honestly owned over a dozen fifth wheels over the years. My parents, they love fifth wheels. Always the bigger the better and they're, they're, they're mine. You know, I remember as a kid, we uh, lived in a fifth wheel two or three different times actually. You know, my dad's a home builder, so grew up building our own houses and living in the fifth wheel next to the house and then moving. Did cross country, or uh, you know, trips all over the, mostly over the West Coast, not cross, not too much cross country with my family. I have personally been to 44 states with my wife and my daughter in campers, RVs, motorhomes. So I feel like I got a pretty good um, understanding of what's out there, the quality of the products and and essentially ROA, you know, we started over 14 years ago and our evolution has been, we started with cheaper trailers and we slowly evolved into higher end fifth wheels up to motorhomes to diesel coaches, motor coaches and Highline, things that are like a million dollars. It's really, really nice premium stuff. But most of the guys here at ROA were young, we're adventurers. We, on the weekend, we're going down to Moab and camping and just, you know, having a good time. But then during the week, we're selling these 40 to 45 foot tag axle motorhomes, which are just massive. And you're only parking them in campgrounds or Walmart parking lots, right? You're not. And we, we all started talking about, man, it would be cool to get, off, get into the off-road industry. And, and now that's kind of what's led us to where we are now, selling exclusively off-road trailers, very high quality, very high end. When it comes to what the standard market offers, you know, from Indiana, Elkhart, Indiana is like, RV Mecca, something like 80 to 90% of every RV in America. And they made, oh shoot, I think in between five to 600,000 units last year, right? So lots and lots of units in the US have, were made and sold. And I, it's something like 80 to 90% of them come out of Indiana. And when you compare our off-road campers to those, it's, it's, there's a substantial difference in quality. But having said that, if you're a first time RV owner, if you're buying a camper for the first time, I, I like to always tell people campers have problems no matter what camper it is. Whether it's a off-road camper, whether it's a million dollar motor coach or a $20,000 travel trailer, like they all have problems. As a matter of fact, NASA has built spaceships that have blown up, right? Like they've built faulty products and these are engineers that are the brightest minds in the entire world and they still build faulty things. So nothing is exempt from potentially breaking, right? And that's that's something, I, you know, I kind of like chuckle when people are like, oh, you know, I'm going to spend a hundred grand and they expect they're not going to have problems. And I'm like, you know, it's it's silly. That's not realistic. Just because you buy a car for 20 grand or a car for 50 grand or, or 80 grand 
all of those cars still go and get oil changes. They all still have to get tire rotations and balances and, and they all have problems. You can go out and buy a brand new truck for 80 grand and it can have an issue. I, I My truck just got out of the shop, $700 for a brand new starter, right? It's got 40,000 miles. It's a 2019, pretty nice truck. And it got a starter. This thought of like, oh, if I spend more money, I'm not gonna have problems. That's not necessarily true. Now, are you gonna have a better quality trailer? Are you gonna have more features and functionality? Are you gonna have more capability? Yes, absolutely, right? If you're going out and buying an off-road trailer that costs a hundred grand or more, like that trailer is going, like there's value. You're gonna be able to go off grid longer. You're gonna be able to go places that a standard $20,000 trailer didn't, wouldn't go. But uh, like this idea of believing like, oh, I'm never gonna have problems is just not, it's just not true. It's not a reality. I just want to always be giving value to the marketplace, to the people that are buying trailers for the first time, and just so that they can have these expectations that are realistic, right? And, and, and I always use the analogy or, you know, I try to tell people, listen, if you hooked up your house onto a trailer and started dragging it down the highway, you know, that vibrations, those shaking, that's like an earthquake, right? That would be like a 3.0, 4.0 earthquake. And I say, if you believe that nothing in your house would break, like that's just crazy. Things are gonna be shifting, doors, hinges, screws, caulking, right? Like it's shifting, moving down the road. It's an earthquake. Like it's inevitable that something would break on your house if you put it through that. And then you go and take it off road. What kind of earthquake is that? That's like a 6.0, 7.0, I don't know what it is, but your house would crumble to nothingness at that point. The fact that we have off-road trailers that can go off-road and get smashed, go down washboards and not crumble to nothingness, that's pretty good. It's because your house wouldn't be able to sustain that because obviously obviously the trailer is designed to go off-roading. The, the trailer is designed to go down the road, but at the end of the day, it still is going to have issues. And that's why you have warranty. That's why we do here at ROA, we do upgrades. We do upgrades on like every trailer we have. And the reason is because we go out and we use them and we find points that, that fail and we try to improve them and make them better, right? It's the same thing with NASA. NASA, when they build something, they understand there could be failure. So they have a lot of different points of uh, failure where they have redundancy, where if this does fail, they have another system to cover it. But of course, we're not sending you into outer space where failure means life or death. Usually the worst failure that you're gonna get here is some one of your components is not gonna work, right? There's always little issues. And I just think, I think it's really important when you're going out to buy a camper, whether it's a very cheap $20,000 camper or a $100,000 camper, just have that expectation. Now, the biggest thing that I can recommend, you know, if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I'm going to, you know, obviously I don't want an off-road camper, so they're not gonna buy something from me. If they came to me and said, my next door neighbor or a family member said, hey, Shane, what should I look for in a, in a motor home, right? I would tell them exactly what I'm telling you. Don't have these unrealistic expectations. You know, the difference between a multi-million dollar yacht and a $20,000 Jayco is usually the $20,000 Jayco when it breaks down, the owner is fixing it himself or taking it to his local dealer to get fixed. The you know, $20 million yacht, the millionaire that owns that boat, he has a guy that he hires to come and fix it for him, right? So, so it, it, it's not that it, things don't fail or break, it's just, it's just at a different level, right? <clears throat> but what I would say is the most important thing is one, you find what you want, what works best for you and your family, right? That's number one. And then you find the right dealer. Now, there are some manufacturers are, that are better and do focus more on quality and they do put better components in it. So it is important to be searching out manufacturers that have a good reputation and also a good reputation with their warranty process because sometimes you get into these manufacturers that just don't stand behind their products as much. So that's really important. But more than anything else, I think it's the dealer you buy from, whether they're gonna help you and service you after the sale. And, and if you find a good dealer that's willing to help you service your products, then, then the friction kind of goes away is because the standard, standard protocol for a new time RV owner is you buy a trailer, something breaks, you call up your dealer and they say, hey, um, how can I help you? Well, this broke, oh great. We, it looks like we have in the schedule two months out, you can come and bring it and drop it off. But I'm going on a camping trip this weekend. We're so sorry, that's the soonest we can get you in. And that's it. And a lot of times what happens is people wait until they're going on a camping trip to go and check on the trailer and then they realize it's broken and their camping trip is ruined and so everybody's mad and upset and, and that's, why, well, that's one of the reasons why the industry has such a bad reputation. It's not like, it's not as streamlined as cars where you, know, you can drop it off and get it fixed same day, right? Uh, the RV industry is much, much different. Here at ROA, 
we are trying to change this. We are trying to challenge manufacturers to make things better, to make them easier to service, to make them easier to warranty. And the RV industry is just not that large of an industry to be able to do some of these things. There's always improvements. And I'm not saying I still am calling out the RV industry saying they can do better and they should be doing better. Here at ROA, we feel like we are pushing the industry to do better. But these are some of the expectations as a first time RV owner. Look for what you want. Try to do some research on the manufacturer. Make sure they actually take care of their people and their warranty. Go out and find a good dealer. You know, that is such such an important thing is to find a dealer that will help you, that will service you, that will actually answer your phone call. Some dealers, once you leave their lot, they don't even pick up their phone anymore. And that's just, that's, it's unfortunate. You know, like that's, to me, it's, it's really sad. And that's kind of the reputation of the industry. And that, that, that really, to me, finding a good manufacturer and finding a good dealer to me are so, so, so important if you're a first time RV owner. And just remember, have realistic expectations. I tell people, you know, no trailer in the world is a Toyota, right? Like Toyotas, yeah, they have a great reputation for never breaking down, but I would like to challenge that because that's not true. Toyotas break down too. The difference from my observation is the use, the usage of the Toyota versus the usage of an RV or a camper, right? You use your Toyota every single day to drive back and forth to work. And you are doing maintenance. You are changing the tires. You are rotating things. You are having things break and you're getting recalls. But because you use it 365 days of the year and you might do that five or 10 times, it doesn't hurt you as much, right? If you use your trailer one or two times and you have to fix something one or two times, now all of a sudden this feels like, oh my goodness, I've only used this once and I had to fix it. I only use it three times and every time I use it, I had to fix it. And, and I think that's a huge thing is the amount of usage that you put on the camper. You know, the more you use it, the less you're going to have to fix it because the ratio, it's just, it's inevitable. And so that, that is my last and final thing outside of expecta expectations, you know, setting those realistic expectations is number three, don't buy a camper if you don't use it because it's not worth it. Don't buy a camper and just set it next to your driveway and never use it because that's a, that's a, that's a good way to, you might as well go burn your money, right? It's just silly. I love campers. I love camping. I love nature. When I get out into nature, you know, you, you talk to my wife, she says, you are a different person when you're in the mountains. I feel energized. I feel it's almost like a spiritual experience for me. I, I go up there and I feel energized. I feel you know, vitality comes into my soul and I go back home and I just, I just, I feel more at peace and joy. That's what camping does for me. And an RV, a camper gets me out more frequently into nature and enjoying that and getting that energy. And, and I love it. I absolutely love it. My, some of my fondest memories growing up as a kid were in a camper with my family. Like I said, we've lived in it. We've traveled all over. And so like you can use these items, these units, these campers, these trailers as a tool to have a better life, to be able to enjoy more and see more and have more freedom and flexibility to go places that you wouldn't normally go, but you have to use it. And the more you use it, the less that that pain will feel when things are breaking, right? Because things will break. I, I hate to say it, but I can guarantee it. But thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. And like I said, this is, this is RVs for Beginners 101. Brought to you by ROA Off-Road. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.